file administration on the command line in Linux is a breeze because really everything in Linux is a file. So we have a lot less overhead to deal with compared to other operating systems. With that, let's jump in. Make sure you have a terminal open if you haven't already. And let's start off by running the ls command. So we can see that we actually have our test folder here from the previous lab. Now we'll come back to that folder. But in the meantime, let's actually make a working folder on the desktop. And we can do that so we can actually see what we're doing. And we're actually going to be opening up the files as we go along. So let's make a folder here called test folder, just like the one that we had previously. And now that we have that folder open, let's actually double click it on the desktop so we can see what's inside. At this point, it's empty. So nothing should be inside there. Okay, so now we want to go inside the folder. So let's CD inside of there. And then next we're gonna run a new command called touch. And now touch is actually an interesting command because what it's actually doing is updating the timestamps of the file. But it's sort of like a shortcut. If we were to run touch and then a file name after that, because there's no file, it's going to try to change a timestamp on something that doesn't exist. And by doing so, it's actually going to create a file for us. So it's a bit of a shortcut and we're gonna use that. And so by running the command touch test file, it's actually going to create test file. So we should see it appear inside the folder on the desktop. And if we run ls, great. We can see it inside the folder on the command line as well too. Okay, so we can make files now. Now can we read them? And for that, there's the cat command. And cat actually stands for concatenate. And this is a little weird at first because it doesn't really sound intuitive, but when you cat a file, it'll actually read the contents of the file to the terminal. And what it's actually doing under the hood is it's actually linking the contents of the terminal and then redirecting that to the terminal's output. And that's how we can actually view it. And now considering that there's nothing in the file, when we run cat test file, nothing appears. So how do we get text inside of the file? Well, for that, we can use the echo command. And we can hit echo and then give one quotation mark and then hit enter and watch what happens. We get this weird prompt. Like it's waiting for us to do something. And the reason why is because it actually needs another quote to finish the command. Otherwise it just stays in this state waiting for forever input. So now if we actually have a quote at the end of some more text and hit enter, it'll complete. So what we can see here is that this echo command will echo whatever we put inside of the quotation marks as the output on the terminal. And it'll actually even include those extra lines that we kept hitting enter with over there. They'll still appear on the output as well too, above the text. And now look, sometimes we're gonna make mistakes and miss a quote. So let's do that again. And this time let's press control C. And control C actually breaks the operation. And this is gonna be very handy with other types of commands we run. If we run into a mistake or something's frozen, we can press control C as an interrupt and it will just break the sequence. Okay, so if we want to complete the command, we need to run echo with two quotation marks. So let's try that now. And good, that worked. But what if we did three? Same problem. So you see how the quotations always have to be wrapped. They're pairs. If you have one, you need the other. If you have three, you need one more. And now just for good measure, we'll do that one more time and just get you exposed to running and hitting that control C, just to break out of things again. It's really handy. Okay, so let's actually start using the command and do an echo and put hello inside of quotes and hit enter. So now we have hello sent back to us. It's actually the output on the terminal. So what we want to do is actually redirect that output into the file. And that's how we'll put text inside of a file. And in order to do this, we have to use a little greater than symbol. And this is a redirector. This redirects that output to the test file itself in this case. And now double clicking the file inside of the file manager. If we open it up, we can see that text appear. So everything's working perfectly, really easy to do on the command line. And what about now adding text to a file? Well, we have the first line that says, hello, let's add a second line now saying darkness, my old friend. And we need two redirectors to do that. And that appends to the file. One of those redirectors overwrites to appends means that it adds to the file itself. So let's see what happens now that we've done that command and open it back up. So we can see, great, we have hello, and then line two is darkness, my old friend. So that's working just as intended. So let's go and actually overwrite the file. 
let's go and write hello darkness my old friend but this time we'll just use one of those redirectors and let's see what happens and there you go so the file has actually been overwritten and it has our new line and everything else that was in before is gone and now if that wasn't actually over abundantly clear let's do that one more time just for demonstration and say that this will overwrite everything in the file with the redirector put that inside of test file and now if we open it back up we can see that everything has actually been overwritten and then now we can just try to append to the file and just say something like echo but this won't and then two redirectors into test file and then again that is appending and adding to the file and if we open it up we can see but this won't so simple enough you just have to try it out a couple times try overwriting and appending to a file on your own and see how it clicks after after a few times it should start making a little bit more sense that way okay so that's actually more of a you're in a pinch you just need to put some text inside of a file or maybe append something to it and we'll see that later on but what we really want to use is a text editor and yes so text editing on the terminal with a text editor is actually really easy. I mean, this is how it was done for years before a GUI actually existed. So we'll use a text editor called nano, and we can use the which command, and this tells us where that binary or that executable lives on the disk itself. In this case, it's under the user bin folder, and we can then run the what is which command. Just to get an idea what it actually does, it actually just locates a command for us. And for more orientation around what Nano is, we can always check the man page, take a look inside and see what it actually is. Just another text editor inspired by the Pico text editor. And you'll see that a lot tools sort of riffing off of other tools and trying to do more or less depending on what they need. And after a little bit of man page reading, we can just hit Q when we're ready to exit. So if we want to go and edit a file now, we just type in Nano and the file name and we'll be prompted with a text editor. And Nano's interface is super simple. It doesn't have too many features. It's kind of like Notepad inside of Windows or any other regular text editor if you've used. You use your arrow keys, you go to where you want, you put the text in that you'd like, and that's really it. So that's a lot easier instead of chaining commands back and forth and making sure you that you don't actually overwrite your file because that's very possible by just using Echo, and that's a big mistake. And then once we're done with what we need to do inside of Nano, we can just hit the control plus a character for various functions like exiting or cutting and replacing text. We can even paste as well too with control U. You can change some alignment. So simple, gets the job done in and out. And that's basically it. So let's go ahead and exit it. And that's how we'll save the file. Control X will give us this prompt asking us to save the modified buffer. And if we hit Y for yes, it will save it. And it's gonna give us the file name to write. By default, it will be the same file that we're editing. So you can just hit enter and you're good to go. So now let's read the contents. We can run that cat command again. So if we do cat test file, we'll get our output. So it'll read the contents of the file right to the output of the terminal. And that's it. We can go inside, do a little bit of editing with nano, run the cat command and see what's inside of the file afterwards. All right, so up next, we want to try to remove the file. We can delete it, and we can use the rm command, and that is to remove files and folders. So it's as simple as just writing rm test file and hitting enter. Perfect, so that's good. Let's go ahead now and cd back one directory, and let's try to remove the folder, and we get an error. So the rm command by default can't remove folders as well as files. Let's check the man page. If we're trying to delete a folder, Maybe we can get the man pages on folders itself. Maybe there's a man page that exists for a folder. So let's try that. And that's not going to work. So I just want to clear that out of the way that man pages are just for commands. So if we try that, no information. It doesn't help us very much. So what we need to do is actually run the man page command for the rm command. And now we have to do a little bit of documentation reading. So let's go and sift through this man page now that it's open and try to figure out how we can actually remove this folder. If we start going through the options over here, nothing's really jumping out at us, but then there's this tack R option. So it's clearly right there. Remove directories and their contents recursively. So that's what we need. That flag right there will allow us to delete folders. 
we can also use tack D for empty directories. And if we weren't sure, we could just go ahead and use the forward slash and search through the man page. Typing something like direct and then looking for directory itself, maybe as an example, that would help us actually narrow down our search. And this is just a habit that I would hope for you to start getting to the habit of, of looking through documentation, performing searches, and trying to find something on your own or maybe explore some advanced features. And there's a reason for that, because at some point you're going to run into a problem that doesn't immediately have an answer online when you search for it. And that's fine. So what you want to do is start developing the habit of reading this documentation a little bit at a time early on so that it starts to feel more natural instead of one large unit of work trying to figure it out later on. And so now speaking of a unit of work, let's go ahead and delete this folder with the RM TACR option and knock it out. Perfect. So the folder doesn't exist anymore. If we were to try to go back one directory in the GUI, well, it's going to give us an error because it doesn't exist anymore. So we can close that up and we can carry on with our cleanup over here. So now a little bit more cleanup. Let's go back one directory and remove that old test folder we made before. And we're going to try the RM tack D. But first, let's just make sure nothing's in the folder. It's always good practice. And now we just want to verify that there's nothing in there. So just running an LS and then tack AL looking for hidden folders and files, we can actually run the next command. And what we want to do now is actually try and run that RM tack D command and delete empty folders. Running NLS, just to verify this, perfect, it's gone. And that's really it for command line file administration. So up next, we have file permissions. We'll see you in the next one.